Hello everybody, Sergeant Argubrant here, and today we're going to be reacting to the last part of World War II The Resource War, Strategic Bombing. Oh, let's get straight into this. Whoops, what happened to the sound? Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. What? Upon it depends our own British life. Oh. And the long continuity of our institutions and our empire. The whole fury and might of the enemy must very soon be turned on us. Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be free, and the life of the world may move forward into broad, sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister and perhaps more protracted by the lights of perverted science. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty, and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say this was their finest hour. Well, Winston Churchill speech. uttered those yeah. words on June 18, 1940. Three weeks later, the Battle of Britain would begin, and it truly was their finest hour. One small island stood together against the greatest military force the world had ever known. What? That's by no means a small island. The British... Britain is not a small island. And plus, it did have the rest of its empire, so consider that. Hey, get off of my computer! Eclipse, come on. Okay. No! Eclipse! I need to make this. Sorry, guys. Oh my gosh. One last light of democracy stood burning against the fascist darkness. And as the darkness closed in, they fought to keep it burning with a resolve and tenacity that no one in the world expected. To throw the heroism of those exhausted air crews that day and night served as the steel wall of England deserve all the credit we can give them, this was a battle won by a nation. It was not only one in the sky over the English Channel, it was one in the radar stations that dotted the coast. It was one in the munitions factories and on the tarmacs. Mm. It was one in the research labs and in the code-breaking facilities. Well, that is definitely true. These kinds of things aren't really recognized as much. It was won by a people, not just a military, and everybody thought that those people would break. Someday I would love to dig into the full story of the Battle of Britain, as it is one of the most powerful stories of modern history. But today, we want yeah. to tell it from a point at which I guess. it turned. From the point at which it stopped being a battle between two military forces, a battle which the fascists might have been able to win, to a battle of a military against a people. A battle the Nazis never had a chance at. It's the night of August 25th, 1940. A German bomber crew is flying over the English countryside. They've been tasked with taking out oil tanks at Rochester and at Hemshaven, but something's wrong. They've hmm. been flying too long, their fuel is low, and they still haven't seen their target. Oh, are they? I think this is the part where they bomb London, right? Should they press on? They've already passed it. And then they... because... What happens in real life is that they accidentally bomb London. And then Churchill gets really mad at them, and then... bombs Berlin. And then that sort of starts the whole London, like, bombings. The terrifying cordon of British air defense can't turn back now, but still they see nothing. No, no, wait, there, there's something. Buildings, an urban area, this must be it. They open their bomb bay doors. And no, their it is. But it wasn't the fuel reserves at Rochester and Thames oh that gosh. bomber crew was flying over. Those bombs fell on London. They had bombed the biggest civilian center in the UK. There was outrage. Winston Churchill, assuming it was a deliberate attack, ordered a retaliatory strike on Berlin. These RAF bombers were supposed to target commercial and industrial targets, but they too missed their targets at the cost of what? German civilian lives. And like that. And this is what started the like, like this is what started the London bombings, and or the Germans, and where the Germans stopped bombing the actual important sites, like strategic sites, and started bombing civilian areas instead, which cost them, um, a lot. Gloves were off. 
Hitler, who had previously ordered the Luftwaffe not to intentionally target civilians, now rescinded that command. And on September 7th, one of the largest coordinated bombing raids, with nearly a thousand bombers spread out over 32 kilometers, commenced. Their target? London, the heart of the British Empire. Wow. The idea was that if they could break the people of London, maybe they could break the empire itself. The Battle of Britain raged for months. German losses were mounting, but the RAF was also on the ropes. The hope on the German side was that this would be the knockout blow, that without enough air power to defend their major cities, the average citizen would lose faith in the government's ability to protect them and break under the constant threat. Well, yeah, in real life, they actually, the opposite happened, they just, um, their will got stronger. So, was that if the Luftwaffe ever had a real chance of winning the Battle of Britain, it was right there on the week of the 7th by not attacking the populace. RAF was exhausted and worn down to the point where another week of concerted attack might, might have broken them. But instead, this massive diversion of resources to attack targets that didn't really reduce the RAF's yeah. capacity to fight gave them just the space they needed to come back. Exactly, and that's why they, that's pretty much why they lost the air war. Then smashed the raids on London. On September 15th, Germany made one last push to break London, and instead was herself broken. In the massive air battle that ensued, with nearly 2,000 planes in the air over London, the Jeez, Germans were repelled and reeling from recent defeat, canceled their planned invasion of Britain. Okay, well, oh my gosh, really? <sighs> oh boy. The invasion of Britain was stupid anyway, that would not have worked. Even if the Germans had complete air supremacy. Seriously. I've talked about this before. They came up with a new plan. One which doubled down on the strategy of breaking the civilian populace. Okay. They would abandon the struggle for control of the air and focus on a campaign of terror. That every night when British air defenses were far less effective, sent waves of German bombers to deliver a payload of destruction. Wait, are they just going to talk about the freaking British bombings? What about the bombings in the Netherlands that the Germans did, or that they threatened to do, which is interesting? What about in the Soviet Union? What about the bombings in Germany, which were, like, multiple times, um, I think, actually. They were much worse than the bombings that were in Britain. But, like, we're already, like, almost all the way through the video, more than halfway, and they haven't talked about anything else besides Britain. Like, there's so much other things that isn't being covered. ...of London. But in the end, this massive diversion of resources took more away from the Nazi war effort than it ever did from the Allies, which, historically, is actually almost always what happens with air-based campaigns. Since the dawn of aviation, it's been the dream of military strategists to win wars without ever putting troops on the ground. But short of the use of nuclear arms, it practically never worked. Whether it be the hmm. early attempts with Zeppelins in World War One, the Axis splits, or the Allied bombings of places like Dresden during World War II, the Napalm campaigns of Vietnam, or the modern conflicts in the Middle East. And the Blitz makes this fact clear. As the Germans pursued this strategy further and further, it became increasingly evident that the cost in men and material to the German forces exceeded the actual economic damage they were inflicting, even when their goal was primarily to just yeah. grind the British economy to a halt. In Germany, I talked about this a lot. They have a they have a huge problem with oil too, and they're using all their oil up, um, with all their planes, you know, attacking Britain. As soon as the goal shifted toward breaking the will of the populace, the effect on wartime production became marginal at best. Month after month, British war production rose, and enlistment never slackened. And although nothing is as simple or as clear cut as myth making. To make it, this also brought together the British people. As German bombs fell on London and casualties mounted, those with parents and siblings and friends whose lives were cut short by the attacks didn't lose the will to fight. Quite the opposite, they instead became determined to never surrender. They threw themselves into the defense of Britain with a resolve that only comes from the deepest loss, and were prepared to make sacrifices that an unscarred population might never accept. See, that's the thing about strategic bombing. Even when the objective is to strike industry or leadership targets, each civilian casualty, each incident of collateral damage, rather than breaking the enemy, just creates new groups who will forever oppose surrender. And the Blitz also created a sense of national unity. Yeah, I mean...
the there was actually a lot of people in Britain that wanted peace with Germany. Um, but then whenever Germany started bombing London a bunch, that kind of, you know, stopped. Which is interesting. Shared trouble. Everybody who <laughs> lived through the Blitz, rich and poor, shared a commonality that crossed many previous divides. And whether it was spending nights huddled together in a shelter, manning a civil defense gun, or working together on a volunteer fire crew, the Blitz literally brought people together. It made them understand each other and rely on each other as they'd never done before. And again, although nothing's ever as rosy as we remember, in the end, the Blitz did more to unify Britain than to divide it. And I think that concludes this look back at World War II. Yeah, well, again, that was the last episode. Thank you all for watching. I wish it would have gone a bit more in-depth with other stuff besides just, you know, Britain. And tomorrow we'll be making a video about military history of visualized. Which is a very nice YouTube channel, by the way. Yes, thank you all for watching. And goodbye.